A copy of the pump station flows for the month of September are inc included in your packet. We had some errant flows reported at the Willowdale pump station due to a failing flow meter, which has since been replaced. Uh, other than those irregularities, no issues were noted. The generators at pump station six and the wastewater treatment plant are of a size that exceeded uh, that exceeds the district's load bank. Consequently, neither has been load, uh, loaded to capacity since they were installed. With that, in this year's budget, we budgeted to rent a load bank of sufficient size um, to do bo uh, both, both those stations. This past m month, uh, we finished this work and both generators performed very well. We feel that the uh, newer generation, low emission generators, uh, may not have the wet stacking issues of some of the older generators have had in the past. Carl has added this work to his PM schedule at a five-year interval as a result of his findings. At, uh, I was asked at the last meeting uh, to discuss with our legal counsel the mechanics of the transfer of powers from the uh, treasurer to the deputy treasurer and back. It was their intent that the process be a formal process and that only one of the parties would be responsible for the treasurer's duty at any given time. Um, just a reminder, our 2007 budget workshop is scheduled for November 17th at 6.30 p.m. And this past month, we received four, four ODA complaints from the uh, Pine Point Pump Station number two area. That's what I have for the superintendent's report. Question, Mr. Chairman. Sally. Um, so, so to be clear, when we when we vote as a board to appoint a deputy treasurer or assistant treasurer, which we call the deputy deputy treasurer, um, then that individual functions as the treasurer, even upon the treasurer's return to the community, until the board then designates the treasurer to be back functioning in that capacity. That is correct. Okay. And is that something that we ought to clarify? I, I mean, the, the, the bylaw change that we enacted didn't was not that specific. Yeah, and um, it's probably, I think it is something that needs to be uh, clarified in that bylaw. We'll just, I'll modify the language, pass it uh, by our council and then um, put it back in front of the board to replace the, uh, that such that it, it is this clear because three years down the road when we have to do something like this, none of, you know, a lot of us aren't going to remember this yeah, conversation. I think, that would be, I think that would be prudent. Thank you. Um, I have a question, Mr. Chairman, in that regard. Do we need to make it that formal? Or can we leave the language in the bylaws as it is? Well, I think the issue in my mind is simply um, <coughs> the attorneys think that it's important, the, the processing and the handling of our financial transactions require that it be clear that the treasurer who's functioning on behalf of the board is duly authorized. Mm -hmm. And so I think that would be the issue why we really want to be careful that we have it clearly clearly worded. And we certainly don't want to debate uh, three years from now amongst people who may not have, sto have historical memory or, mm -hmm. or even clouded memory of what we actually talked about. So I think if we could make it clear, I think that would be, I think that would really be a prudent thing to do. Okay. I was just wondering if we could have something in place similar to the chair-vice chair relationship. When the chair is unable to fulfill the chairman's duties, the vice chair just steps in. There's no vote or duly noting of the board to do that. Well, again, this was a suggestion that came from our attorneys. Yeah. Uh, that was, it was their recommendation that we proceed this way. Uh, I, I agree with you. Uh, if, if we could structure it that way, have both people's names um, on our authorization forms, but I mean, I don't know whether it would be an issue with our uh, financial statements and accounting, whether there's a legal issue particularly. Yeah. We, you know, we haven't met as a group with the attorneys, and, and I, I don't think I really would want to take time and pay that bill to do that unless unless 
Dave comes back to us and says is there, is really an issue. Okay. I'm willing to handle it as Dave has recommended it. And if there's a if there's another issue that we should be concerned about that is raised through his discussions with the attorneys, I think we could deal with it then. I, frankly, I was surprised because I thought that by definition the superintendent is the assistant treasurer, and I thought that would be enough so that he could take care of those duties in the absence of the treasurer. So I was surprised that the attorneys recommended and advised us that we mm. need to do what we need to do. So, but I think I think you're listed as the assistant treasurer on all of our. Yeah, I'm listed projects. as. Is it wording assistant? I, I, we were looking Deputy at it. Treasurer. No, no, no. Oh, no, you? No, I'm oh, okay. You're. Your title. We get the exact wording, but. Um, okay. Assistant treasurer and clerk. Yeah. But they were uh, when we spoke with them. They they. Did not agree that it gave me the do, the ability to sign checks or anything like mm -hmm. that. So. so I guess we'll just proceed on this on this path and clarify. And when we need to appoint a okay. deputy treasurer, we'll do that. I will just add one more thing. I've seen other boards work in which the treasurer had primary signing duties, and it was written into the bylaws that the chairman had the ability to sign as well in the treasurer's absence. Um, again, without formal appointing from the board, that particular board in another town, it, it just, I'm, I'm just a little concerned about the logistics that if the treasurer's out of town one month, then we have to duly appoint the deputy treasurer. Treasurer comes back, deputy treasurer's out of town. And we have to reappoint the treasurer. Well, I think, I think if the treasurer is out of town, say on business or vacation mm -hmm. or whatever, I think he can coordinate that with the superintendent. It wouldn't necessarily be necessary that we have a deputy treasurer appointed. Okay. I think when we what we anticipated when we enacted this bylaw was an extended absence of the treasurer. Ah. Okay. So this you don't envision this happening. Not very often. No, when the treasurer leaves town, I don't envision us okay. enacting Thank an, you. this on an interim basis. Okay. So you'll be writing something up. <laughs> uh, I had a question on C, which is the, the renting of the... Uh, load bank? Load bank, yeah. We, we, before we owned a loan, uh, uh, load bank... Now we're renting a load bank? We, we do own a load bank. Uh, it, is, it is sized sufficiently to um, load let's see, 22 of our 24 generators. Um, the generator of the plant is a 500 kW generator. The generator at pump station 6 is 750 kW. Um, it's a fairly... It, 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 far exceeds what that current load bank is capable of, of doing. So we rented, rented one just to do this. So is this something that we're going to continuously rent? or is it Once every five years. Once every five years. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, I was just curious what the rental fee was. I can't remember off the top Did of you rent head. it for a week's time? Yeah, we rented it for a week. Yeah. And... Um, I mean, my would guess would be it would be it would have been several hundred dollars, but I don't think it would have been thousands. So, it seems to me that rental would be a rental would be a prudent way to go here, rather than size size our load banks up for something that we only need to do twice every five years. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions for the superintendent? Not seeing any. We'll move on to correspondence. Um, including your packet is a copy of the DEP incident report for the sanitary sewer overflow into the basement of number 9 Avenue 2. The sewer backed up into the homeowner's basement as a result of a sewer blockage. A summary of the events follows. On Monday, October 3rd, uh, Scarborough Sanitary District was notified that the sewer service was broken during a directional bore of a water main on Avenue 2. The bore actually occurred the week prior. 
the general contractor was notified of the service break at number four Avenue two on Saturday. On Saturday, the contractor did a temporary repair. However, sand and gravel had gotten into the sewer, causing a backup and blockage of the sewer main, which resulted in the overflow into the basement of number nine. Um, during uh, during our inspection of number four, we, we were notified on, on Monday. Uh, during our inspection of number four, the overflow at number nine was identified. As it turned out, the directional bore actually broke three sewer services and deflected one other. The general contractor completed the repair to number four, while the subcontractor, the boring contractor, completed the other three repairs. The sewer has since been jetted and TV. Uh, I'm curious. Um, the the uh, the damage was created by the boring instrument not following the path that they had that they had intended to bore, or were things mislocated? What was the what was the things were actually very well located. Um, the <coughs> we had did the dig safe for the uh, project. The general contractor had um, potholed each sewer service and water services to locate them and actually identify the depth of them and, and had written the depth of the each sewer service on the street. Um, the thought is that, or w one of the thoughts that was given to me was when they bored, uh, did the directional bore, they actually were underneath everything, but when they pulled the, the uh, water main back, they actually pulled it back too fast, and the water main ended up uh, traveling up a couple feet in elevation, ending up hitting our sewer services. And actually a couple water water services. So I'm guessing this is <coughs> deep and the sand that they were in was wet? Yes, <laughs> slightly. And I'm sure that probably made the sand live and made that pipe more prone to migrating in different directions. Yeah, and, and, and it also made the repairs very difficult, uh, very um, very wet and lively mm -hmm. material down there. So each, it took the contractors a, uh, a day for each to a service repair. Yeah. It was a and long week. The, the damage to the to the property was that is that paid for by the contractor's insurance? We're not involved. We're not involved in it. The uh, homeowner is um, working through the general contractor and the subcontractor on that. And what about our what about our time? Uh, our time. I've submitted a bill uh, to the general uh, to the uh, boring contractor. Um, we had about nine thousand dollars worth of uh, time involved and overseeing, identifying, inspecting, and overseeing the repairs, and that bill has been submitted, and they've, um, they've at least indicated in correspondence that they will be taking care of it. Yeah. Sure. Did that include the jetting and the cleaning of the lines? That included the jetting and cleaning, yeah. Thank you. Any questions? So uh, old business, no old business, so we'll move on, move on to new business uh, for Southgate Road. Okay. Um, be, on behalf of Four South Gate uh, LLC, Sebago Technics is requesting district approval to connect into and discharge uh, into the sewer the sanitary wastewater flow from the proposed 9,920 square foot building. The proposed building would consist of five 2,000 square foot commercial condominiums. Uh, each with an office, bathroom, and storage area with access via a garage door. Sewer service will be obtained via a six-inch sewer service connected to the existing sewer main within Southgate. They are requesting approval for 240 gallons per day of sanitary wastewater flow, which is based on approximately four employees per unit and 12 gallons per day per employee. I recommend a, uh, approval with the uh, following conditions. The flow is limited to 240 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste. Any future flows in excess of the approved amount or flow characteristics are subject to additional approvals. 
the 240 gallons per day is subject to the capacity reserve fee. The current capacity reserve fee is $15.17 per gallon uh, and is adjusted monthly based on the engineering news record con construction cost index. Based on the current ENR index, the total capacity reserve fee due is $3,640.80. Capacity reserve fee is due prior to issuance of the sewer permit. Any flow above the 240 gallons per day will be subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. Sewer permit is required. A complete application associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is ex executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no site sewer work shall be completed. All sewer, sewer services shall have detectable underground utility marking tape and uh, tracer wire. No floor drain shall be permitted in the garage or store areas. All bulk chemical storage areas shall be shall have secondary containment. Uh, final plan shall be submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to the issuance of the permit. And finally, professionally surveyed electronic georeferenced uh, CAD drawings, stamped PDF CAD drawings, uh, be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. So moved with those conditions. Second. Any comments? Nick? I'm just wondering about the connection for this project. It is in a sewer line and it goes <coughs> from a sampling manhole to an existing sewer main in a T-wire fashion. Mm -hmm. And there's a manhole just feet away from the connection. Wouldn't it be better to put it into the manhole? Uh, typically, we don't put sewer services into the, uh, directly into a manhole. Um, okay, I was just curious. I mean, we do on occasion uh, if it just makes more sense. Uh, we certainly can do that. And if we did that, we'd I'd, I'd want to take another look at it. I yeah. Think, yeah. But um, if we did that, we might be able to eliminate a manhole for the developer, but. Uh, probably not now that I'm looking yeah. at it. Um, I don't know if it would eliminate a manhole, no, but it just wouldn't. make it easier for maintenance of the line 10, 15, 25 yeah. years no, down, the it, down the road. I can take, certainly take another look at it. Okay. That might be a, just a, a suggestion. A good, good approach. So I had a question about the stamps, and I, I think we talked about the TV yeah. stamps. That without the uh, date, it's not really a valid stamp. And so when we get a final set of plans, the stamp should be dated. Yep. And that's true for all the plans that we you know, receive. Oh, it needs a date with the with stamp? the stamp to be a valid to be a valid stamp. Oh, the date on the plan doesn't count. No, no. across the. Across the stamp, you oh, know, the I date needs to be date. written that I way. Was just the signature. Is that it? way, you know that the date, the stamp is concurrent oh, with yes. the recent with the revision. I get it. Makes sense to me. Thank you. Okay, so the next item is. You need to vote. Oh, we didn't have to vote. Thank you, John. <laughs> All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, next item. Uh, 2401 Broadway, South Portland. On behalf of Eastern Excavation, uh, Sebago Technics is requesting <coughs> district approval to connect and discharge into the sewer the sanitary wastewater flow from the proposed 54,000 square foot building. The proposed building will consist of 18 3,000 square foot commercial units for contractors and commercial bu businesses requiring storage. The project would, would also include 6,000 square foot construction vehicle rental building. Sewer service will be obtained uh, via six inch sewer service in two on site private pump stations. Pump station number two would pump all flow into, the existing, into an existing on site manhole which services this parcel. I recommend approval with the following conditions. The flow is limited to the 936 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste. This is, again, based on four employees per unit plus the six employees for the equipment rental facility for a total of 78 employees um, at 12 gallons per day. Any future flows in excess of this approval or characteristics is subject to additional approvals. 
936 gallons per day is subject to the capacity reserve fee. The current capacity reserve fee is 1517 per gallon. And um, and is adjusted monthly based on the engineering news records. Uh, based on the current ENR, the total capacity reserve fee is $14,199.12. Uh, this fee is due prior to issuance of any permit. Any flow above the 936 was subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. Provide remote communication of all alarms to, to the on-call service provider in accordance with district standards, including loss of commercial power. Um, and an unpowered flow to indicate uh, a sanitary sewer overflow. The panel functionality shall be fully maintained at all times. Pumps shall be uh, protected from flooding. Uh, pump station. Sewer permit is required. Complete application associated fee shall be submitted to the district to time the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no safe sewer work shall be completed. All sewer services shall have detectable underground utility marking tape and tracer wire. No floor drains shall be permitted in the garage or storage areas. All bulk storage uh, shall have secondary containment. Final plans shall be submitted to the dis uh, superintendent for approval. And then pr the uh, professionally surveyed uh, CAD drawings provided to the district upon completion of the project. Motion. So moved with all those provisions enumerated by the superintendent. Second. Comment? Hey. Question, David, do you mind just clarifying for the public perhaps why we're approving a project in South Portland? Oh, um, this area of South Portland, we have an intermunicipal agreement uh, between South Portland and the Sanitary District to provide sewer service for uh, these parcels. Um, there are some restrictions in, in the, uh, this intermunicipal intermunicipal agreement um, that does require um, some off hours pumping and that will be incorporated into, into this design also. Thank you. Nick? Mr. Chairman, I had a question about some of the notes on the drawing, uh, specifically sheet four of eight. There is a note that says force main then I can't read the middle word. It says note seven. I go to note seven, and it says nothing about force mains. And that's parallel to the, the edge of the road of Broadway. Force main. There's an existing force main right there. Okay. Um, force main easement. There's a e force main easement right here. Uh -huh. You got a little piece, parcel piece right there. Yeah. That's an easement that serves this property right here. Okay. Um, so they have an easement to go across this property, and uh, they discharge into that manhole right there. This one here. This is a manhole right off it within the easement itself. Okay. So I, I guess it was thrown by the dash line. Yeah. And is the new proposed force main going into the same manhole? Correct. And, and there's, a, there's already in place a, um, a private sewer agreement uh, that gives them the right to yep. connect into that private sewer. Okay. And just for further clarification, Nick, I noticed that if you look at general note 7 instead of the construction note 7, that, uh -huh. that is specific to the easement. All right. That was on a different sheet. That's correct. Thank you. Yep. Um, following up on the private force main that is getting built on the property mm -hmm. for the different parcels, there are two pump stations. Correct. And I'm looking at the force main coming from what they call pump station number one. Mm -hmm. And I see the force main going right along the edge of the building, paralleling an underground telephone that runs along the edge of the building. And I don't know about 
telephone, but I know water wants at least 10 foot separation from sewer. And if I were a contractor going back 20 years from now to try to fix that force main, I wouldn't want to deal with a telephone line that close. I'm just wondering if they could make some room more between those two lines. Well, frankly, I'm a little surprised telephone lines still exist. I <laughs> <laughs> it says UGT. I'm just assuming it's UGT. It could be Underground Time Warner, but again, maybe it, even that one. I I'm can not convey that to the developer. Yeah, that would be um, a good I mean, idea just to suggest There's that. no requirement. I know there's no requirement. It's just and it's a plan, and I'm an engineer, and I tweak it. Did I say that out loud? Sorry. Anyway, um, and I was also wondering about all the utilities in Broadway, but that's in South Portland, yes? That's South Portland. Do you need some kind of confirmation from the city before we approve this or from South Portland? I communicate with them uh, on a regular basis on okay. on something like this anyway. Um, I didn't get anything formally, but uh, no, they're just going through their own planning process. Okay. Planning board approval process. And I have the same comment on the. the yeah. The the same. Charlie, you have anything? No. All in favor of approval? So the next item is Dunstan's Cross Dunstan Crossing Phase Four. On uh, behalf of Rainin Properties LLC, Sebago Technics requested request the Sanitary District Board of Trustees allow the district to accept the sanitary sewer flows from Phase Four of the Dunstan Crossing. Excuse me, subdivision. Uh, located off uh, U.S. Route 1. <coughs> As you re will recall, the district has been involved with the Dunstan Crossing subdivision since the original approval of the 264 residential development off Broad Turn Road in Route 1 in 2006. The first three phases of the development have been constructed, including a gravity sanitary sewer system within the project in a, um, in a section of Broad Turn Road to the pump station constructed by the applicant on Broad Turn Road that was conveyed to the district. The proposed development consists of the uh, fourth phase of the Dunstan Crossing subdivision, which will consist of the construction of Stewart Drive from the existing roadway terminus in Phase 3 to the proposed intersection with Route 1. Phase 4 will include development of 11 duplexes and 12 single-family uh, house lots for a total of 34 residential units. The proposed sanitary sewer service to the phase of, uh, development was designed as part of the Dunstan Crossing subdivision and consists of a gravity line within the sewer drive to a proposed pump station to be constructed uh, westerly of Phillips Brook. The pump station will uh, pump the sewage via a force main to the existing gravity sewer within phase one of the Dunstan Crossing neighborhood which flows via gravity to the existing district pump station previ previously constructed on Broad Turn Road. The proposed gravity sewer force main and pump station will be transferred over to the district upon completion of the project and acceptance of the roads by the town. I recommend approval with the following conditions. The project is outside the original service area. All 34 residential units are subject to the capacity reserve fee. This uh, fee is based on single-family uh, residential dwelling units with, without accessory units. Any additional homes, dwelling units, or accessory units in excess of this are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. Current capacity reserve fee per home is $3,033.51 and is adjusted monthly based on the ENR. Um, the, the uh, total capacity reserve fee for the 34 dwelling units is $103,139.34, which is due prior to issuance of the sewer extension permit. All sewer services and force main shall have detectable underground utility uh, marking tape and tracer wire. Final plans, including details of the proposed pump station, shall be submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to the issuance of the permits. Sewer extension permit is required. A complete application associated fee shall be submitted to the district 
uh, prior to the sewer extension work, uh, then sewer permits are required for each sewer service, and a complete application associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Uh, prior to being executed, no site sewer work completed, and then finally, professionally surveyed uh, geo-reference CAD drawings and stamp drawings are to be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. Any motion? I'm so moved. Approval. Subject to the conditions uh, outlined by the superintendent. Right. Second. So I'm looking at the overall plan. Can you just, I see there's a number of phase fours here. Uh, phase four would be. There's only one number. phase four. Well, it's phase the four is just large. <laughs> phase four includes. Um, because it has to be built for the, the gravity, or for the, to service the project. Stewart Drive then continues up along this uh, um, border here and then on the southerly property line and back on up along Stewart Drive. I apologize to the public on this. Um, over okay. here. All right, I see how it all comes together. Yeah. Yeah, your point right there. So it would just be these units in here, not. It's these uh, units. It's these units. The pump station is located here. Okay. This is a phase. This six. Phase, phase six. six. Yeah. These properties here, this horseshoe section, and then this development up here, except for a couple of the. I think this lot here is all uh, phase five. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So would, would this would this leave two remaining phases to be developed? It would be leave phase five and phase six, and then there's the uh, commercial property on that faces Route One. That's actually two lots, and those lots are actually within the original sewer service area. Thank you. Do you have a motion already? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Elliot, did you want to get up and speak a little, or are you just going to let it go? I don't think we're going to have much. <laughs> Only if he wants to cause trouble. Right? <laughs> okay. So, uh, any comments, Nick? I had a question about the pump station. Should we include in our motion the provision that it follows the district spec, or is that automatic? Uh, and it's, it's to my approval. So. Okay. And this pump station is um, similar to the one that was built on Broad Turn Road? Better. Better. Even better. How big are the <laughs> pumps? I'm just curious. Are they. What's that? What, do you know? Have you heard about the design at all? What's the flow capacity? It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to mimic our other designs. I don't know the capacity right now. They're still uh, batting that around somewhere. Okay. Um, that's it's going to be less than 24 because it's pumping 224. Yes. Um, that it's, it's an automatic. <laughs> and uh, but it's it's similar design. It'll be Smith and Lovelace uh, pump station, okay. uh, pumps uh, suction lift mm -hmm. um, with uh, building over the pump stations and Good. SCADA uh, based on our design and radio communications for all the alarms and backup generator too. Backup generator. To know. And um, will this neighborhood be the only uh, beneficiaries of that pump station? Or is it planned for any future expansion of the sewer system beyond this? We will include, they, they will not be building it to the pumps, sizing the pumps to anything more than what they need, but it will make sure that it has the ability to be expanded. Thank you. That's all I needed. I, I do have one question. Uh, we go to the light so we can never hear you on TV. Your name and <coughs> address again. Elliot Chamberlain, 8 Nottingham Drive. Um, you talked about when the pump station would be turned over. Does it? Do you actually take over operation and ownership of the small piece of land the pump station sits on and the pump station right after it's built and and you find it? ready to be turned over, or do you actually wait until 
we turn over the roads, which could be multiple years. I don't know. I haven't had done that yet. I'd have to look, check into that for you. Um, but I, I don't know what we did in the past. But I, I know in other uh, soccer we did one. Yeah. Uh, same situation. We still own the roads, but they wanted ownership of yeah. the station. I mean, obviously we're not in the business of running a pump station. Yeah. Um, but so, that um, does that does have its own piece of land that yeah. is designed to be. Uh, separated that uh, for somebody else to own it. I, I assume the sanitary. I would, I would assume that would be the case because now, that, as we're talking, we have had taken ownership of the Broad Turn Road pump station for as long as I've prior to me being superintendent, and yet the roads that it services are not have not been taken over by the town. So correct. I would I would assume that would be the same same process. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Jason, you have a question? Or? No, just a comment. Um, I think in general um, we've been open to accepting pump stations when individual uh, projects um, have been completed to the extent that there's no further work necessary to be done. I think some developers have wanted to hold on to those pump stations and others have been interested in conveying them more quickly and I think it's been handled on a individual basis. I could foresee some scenarios where the district might want to hold off on accepting a pump station until a project uh, reaches a certain degree of completion but in a project like this I don't see that that would you know, be a, be a concern for us so I think that it would probably be appropriate to be able to be willing to accept this at a point in time when it's totally completed and when the developer wanted to make the conveyance. Okay, um, you ready for the vote? All in favor? Thank you. Next order in business is the uh, budget summary. In your packets, we have a budget summary. Move approval of the nine month budget summary. Second. Just make note that it appears that we're tracking very well with regard to this year's budget, and it's like there's a good chance we might finish under budget at year end, surprises notwithstanding. I do want to point out, uh, bring up one anomaly in the budget it's under power um, it has the current month at only five hundred and fourteen dollars and twenty nine cents um, and that would be phenomenal power savings <laughs> <laughs> considering our typical bill is about seventeen thousand dollars a month we did change um, our, how we pay our power bills um, recently. The, we used to do them on an individual basis and we have now, uh, I forget the terminology, Wendy, could you help me on that? The um, gauge transfer. We have grouped all our CMP accounts into an ACH transfer such that uh, it's all done automatically and it's all done as one group payment. With that, we had to get the billing cycles on a bunch of the um, power uh, at, on, at the same time. And so that's why it, it looks a little odd this month, and it will look odd next month because there will probably be two. So anyway, even with that, we're still uh, under budget for year to date on that line item. So I was looking at the postage, and then we have in parentheses $692.29. The parentheses means that we went over. got a check back. Oh, it went over. <laughs> I thought we got a check back from the post office. <laughs> <laughs> That'll never happen. Yeah. Um, all right. Okay. Nick? Uh, just looking at the legal line, we've gone over the limit. You know, we're at 133 percent of a small budget item, though. So, I'm just curious if you envision any legal fees between now and the end of the year due to that real estate matter we had discussed. Uh, I do, but we have monies that.
that they provided us. Oh, okay. Uh, in um, to pay to cover those fees. So they wouldn't be under that line item then. Okay, good to know. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, switching back to the electrical, I know you did ACH to CMP, but you also recently changed who the supplier is. Does the bill for the supplier still come the, through the CMP bill? Yes, it does. Okay, that's all I need to know. Thank you. That's a credit, yeah. Yeah. I miss, Are you I'm, talking I'm, about the post? Yeah, I, miss, I, I gave you some misinformation. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even know it. No. I, I realized you, it you as, as soon that? as I, I was. What's that? You want to explain that? There was a credit item on that one right there, the postage. Yeah, that's what right. I thought that would yeah. be. On, on the other on the other side, on the amount remaining, that's where I where I was thinking, where Nick put out pointed out the legal aspect. It's also in parentheses. There's a uh, parentheses 1,333 31, 31 dollars in parentheses there. That is uh, and it's where we've gone over on that line item. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I, I I apologize. I <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So is it the accountants say to air is human to get paid for it? It's uh, is being an just accountant. Forgive divine. An engineer. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, something to air is human to forgive divine. Yeah. All right. So all in favor? Oh, did you get a motion on that one? Yes. All, right, all in favor? Yes. We're moving on to public comments. There's no public out there right now. Uh, trustee comments? You want to start, start off, Jason? Sure. Uh, sure, Miss Dave Nelson. Okay. Nick? Uh, I'll say ditto. My condolences to Celeste Nelson and her family. Uh, I, for one, will miss Dave. He was a pillar of the community, a pillar and standard bearer of the district. He did a yeoman's job doing the treasurer. And he was a very good steward of the users and their assets. Um, he had a good perspective on the district's business. He had a good handle on what was going on. Um, he was respectful, and most of all, he was huh, very humorous. And I think I'll miss his humor the most. Thank you. Thank you. Bella? Yeah, Dave's passing uh, happened way too early for a fellow his, his stage in life. Um, Served the district for 27 years as a trustee, many of those uh, as the treasurer. And uh, he was well grounded. He had his feet on the ground, common sense guy. Really appreciated his wit and his humor. And uh, and uh, certainly uh, he's he's going to be missed. Um, I wish wish Celeste and the family. The best, our deepest condolences. Um, I was out of state at the time of the uh, funeral and was unable to attend, and I greatly regret that I was unable to be there. Um, so, folks wouldn't call David a distinguished person, but I think he was distinguished in his service to the community through the sanitary district and through other uh, public service organizations and. He's a good man, and I think he'll be missed in Scarborough. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, Dave was a, uh, really an outstanding trustee for the time that he, he put in, uh, being the treasurer all those years. I think he was the treasurer the first year I was on, and he's ever since. Uh, so we will all miss Dave. Uh, can you get a, a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Richard.